Friday to complement the days that the vans weren't operating in the city. It was a resolving success. It was less than three months that Dr. Bielson asked me to enlist other pharmacies, and I went North Avenue and got Dave Oaken from Rudy's Pharmacy, who was a willing participant. Dr. Bielson pointed out to me on many occasions, Norman, you're the only pharmacy in the United States participating in this very unique endeavor. I'd like to acknowledge, we've already been introduced, Steve Weiner, the owner of Mount Vernon Pharmacy on Cathedral Street and Mount Vernon Pharmacy for the Homeless on Falls Way. He, along with Dwayne Weaver at Keystone and Fibus, have been participating in the Norloxon to Save a Life campaign, or program rather, for the last two years. As a community pharmacist, we absolutely support removing these requirements which have proved to have been a barrier to Norloxone. We feel, we can assure you, Dr. Wen, that the pharmacist, the physicians, and public health will work as a group to serve the people for providing the information and the medication needed to save lives. So it's today June the 1st, 2017, that when I got a, that it's such a special day for Fibus Drugstore. When Mark O'Brien called me not too long ago to participate in this program, I jumped at the opportunity because it's a way for us, Fibus, to celebrate our 20th anniversary in partnership with the Baltimore City Health Department. Dr. Wynn, it's been 20 years of privileged participation. So today, this special day, I'd like to dedicate a poem to the overdose response team. Two members are here today, Natasha Rabinowitz, Nathan, raise your hands. Nathan, let me see that contagious smile. <laughs> who have come here to this very room every Monday for the past two years to train people on the administration and the availability of Norlaxo. The poem is by Edgar A. Guest, entitled, It Couldn't Be Done. <laughs> Someone said it couldn't be done but he, with a chuckle, replied that maybe it couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't so so till he tried. So he buckled right in with a bit of a grin. On his face, if he worried, he hit it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. Someone squawked, you'll never do that. At least no one's ever done it. But he took off his coat, and he took off his hat, and the first thing he knew, he begun it. With a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quit it, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. There are thousands to tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesize failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. Just buckle it in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. Just start to sing as you tackle the thing that couldn't be done, and you'll do it. Natasha, Nathan, you did it.
want to make sure that we all hear what, what Lisa has to say. I want to just um, let you know, while we were standing here and learning about the standing order signing and listening to, to Dr. Levin's um, incredible story and partnership at home, we actually found out that someone overdosed just outside of the pharmacy. And that, in fact, our outreach workers, and Nathan, I believe, was the one who, um, who was called to administer Narcan, and he administered two doses of Narcan. And uh, and I don't know if, Nathan, if you want to, I know I'm putting you on the spot, because this is not exactly what we had to plan on doing, but I wonder if you want to, if you want to talk at all about what, what, what just happened. I mean, this is... Can you know we're news, right? We can't even make up this news, but I want to introduce Nathan as her. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to echo something.